we filmed there. And then we didn't hear about the movie for a year. Nothing about it. And then uh, it started playing in film festivals and started winning a bunch of awards. And then it got picked up by IFC. And then Tom then came to me at one of the premieres and said, I want to make part two. And gave me the premise for part two. And I was like, yeah, I'm totally on board. And then they cast in London for... My name's Lawrence. Yeah. <laughs> You're supposed to be talking with me, um, yes. but they cast in London, if I'm not correct, they did, yes. for uh, part two. So, yeah. Um, I've seen that you started acting very late. Kind of, but one could say that we have, we, we have people who started acting for five um, years <laughs> You're a little late. Well, I've been working professionally since 87. Oh. So, a lot of uh, it was be too, it was my first feature film. I uh, did about seven or eight shorts before that, and several years on TV, and uh, years and years doing live performance arts in a in gallery. And I was just at that point, I was hyperventilating. And they wouldn't let us park inside because they said the anthem singer was already inside because my manager had my parents in a separate limousine and he'd obviously told them that so that they could park inside. So we couldn't park inside. So I had to run like three city blocks in high heel boots carrying a pink velvet dress with my hair bouncing all over. Run into a trailer I, and there's, where have you been? Where have you been? Into the trailer, throw the dress on. Then I hit the tunnel, they have a tunnel that looked onto the field. There was nobody in the tunnel, but it's usually for the, the football players, right? So I ran up that, just lickety split, got to the top and realized I had high heel boots and I had to run over grass all the way to my microphone. The microphone was sitting there, the skydivers are coming down. It's really close to my going on. So I hit that, the, the turf and was sticking in all the way to the microphone. And the minute I got there, I thought, I'm going to have to start, and I'm so out of breath, I'll never be able to say anything. And they said, let's have a moment of silence for Coach Bear Bryant, who was a football coach, a college football coach. So I thought, he has saved my life. His passing has saved my life. I had 60 seconds to breathe, and then they introduced me to say the national anthem. getting ready to go to Alaska, and I get a telephone call from George's casting director, who was casting for another little movie. It was Mike Fenton, Michael Fenton and Gene Feinberg, and they were casting for one girl in Cuckoo's Nest. So I said, well, that's a good story. Uh, yes, I will go have a meeting with Michael Douglas, Milos Foreman, Saul Zanz, Jack Nicholson, and have a conversation. They said, you're in. And I go, because I look like a lobotomy patient? They go, yeah, pretty much. You have no lines, and yet I worked 127 days. I learned a lot, because you can't shut me up. I asked a lot of questions, and they were kind enough to give me professional answers. So I learned my craft about what the camera does, 
why they put little marks on the floor, why they take a, uh, a tape measure and bring it up to your eye, focus, all that technical stuff. I, I ain't calling you chicken fucker, but boy over there looks sex, sexually frustrated and I don't approve of chicken fuck. You hear what he called me, boss? I ain't no fucking sex. Come here, you can just stop the jacket and grab the fucking chickens, Cleavon. I'll get the chicken. Yeah, fuck. Appreciate it. Thank y'all. He's a chicken fucker. That's all right. Put it back there. Next time we go someplace else. We ain't never buying chicken from him again, boss. Yeah, I know. Uh, but uh, I also want to, to congratulate you because I think you've played in one of the most amazing movies of the 80s, Weird Science. <laughs> I, I love that movie. <laughs> uh, how did you get into the comedy? I mean, you're more into horror. It's funny, I, I was called uh, one of the icons, well, one of the kings of horror. I've only done two, because I've always called them. A couple others, but overall, I've always had a sense of humor. So I got the job, and I got to meet Robert Downey Jr. He's a genius. I I watch anything he does; he's proficient. And John Hughes just had the he had the uh, pulse of youth at, in the eighties. The movie was fantastic. Got to work with my dear friend Vernon Wells and uh, Bill Paxton, who is. Is tremendous. He's, he's the best whiner I've ever known in the history of. We're dead, man. We're toast. Um, aliens, um, etc. But it was a brilliant comedy, and it played very well. And we just, we had fun uh, roughing up the kids and tearing up the house. <laughs> Can we keep this between us? I'd hate to lose my teaching job. <laughs>